we'll start over here. The uh, Mishnah, so we have an argument, the Mishnah between Beisham Beisilel, a neg that's laid on Yom Tif, are you permitted to eat the egg or are you not permitted to eat the egg? Beisham says you're permitted to eat the egg. Beisil says you're not permitted to eat the egg. Usually throughout Shas, Beisilel is always the more lenient opinion. Beisham is always the more stringent opinion. In this Mishnah, the three rulings of Beisham the three rulings of Beisilel, although the rulings are not connected to one another, but because these are the three rulings which are L'Chumra according to Beis Hillel and L'Kul according to Beis Shammai, therefore they're recording the same Mishnah. Although each ruling has no relevance to the other ruling. Okay? So we have a, a, a difficult understanding why should the egg that's laid on Yom Tif, why should it not be permitted? So the Rabbah says, Mustafa Rabbah, Rabbah says, Omar Rabbah. So the question is, what can, what, what, the chicken, what kind of chicken are we speaking about? Are we speaking about a chicken that was designated for eating? So we had difficulty before. If the chicken was designated for eating, so the egg that's laid from the chicken mm -hmm. is no different. It's like part of the chicken. So if it's part of the chicken, it ha it's not mukta. Mukta is only something which wasn't pre-designated. But if it was, the chicken was designated for eating and the egg was, is part of the chicken, mm -hmm. why should the chicken, why should the egg not be permitted to eat? eat? That was the Mara's question. So Mara had said first, it was speaking about Karagoso Medes Legado Beitzim which means it was a hen-laying chicken, it was purely for eggs, therefore the classification of the mother is what? Is not food. It's like an egg machine. Now, a food item is, is, is laid, emanates from that chicken. So are you permitted to eat it? Because the, the chicken was not designated for eating. Are you permitted to eat the, the egg or are you not permitted to eat the egg? Basil says no because of mukta, because there was no pre-designation. Beishami says is more lenient regard to mukta, Something doesn't need, it, as long as it's not negated, it doesn't need any pre-designation. Therefore, the egg is permitted. That's the Machlux B'Sham B'Sila. Okay? Shabbos or Yom Tif. Same thing. Shabbos or Yom Tif. After Yom Tif. Muktzah has no relevance after Shabbos, right? The whole concept of Muktzah has no relevance after, but according to Rabbah, Rabbah says, Lolam Targona Samez Lachilo. We're speaking about the, the hen, the mother was designated for eating. And although it's designated for eating, you're still not permitted to eat Why? Well, beyond the Shalios Achar Shabbos, the Mishnah, when it says that you're not permitted to eat the egg that's laid on Yom Tif, it's being about the Yom Tif was preceded by Shabbos, Askinon, Umishum Achono. It's because, we'll see in a moment, because of preparation. Uksova Rabo, Kombeo, Misyaldo, Idno, Mesmos, Gomelo. That any egg that's laid today, means now, it was prepared, it developed in the last 24 hours. So if you have Shabbos preceding a Yom Tif, and the egg is laid on Yom Tif morning, when was this egg prepared? When did it evolve into being an egg? On Shabbos, we'll see in a moment. No, no, it's, it's, it's a, this is the rice according to Rabbi, it's based on a posuk. <laughs> the Torah says that Shabbos and Yom Tif, the preparation has to be from a weekday. It's based on a posuk. Because, because of the specialness of Shabbos and Yom Tif, the, the meal has a certain designation, and that meal, because of its value, needs preparation from the previous day, which is, which is an ordinary day. Because what Friday, the Pesach was going to call, for Yom Shishi, Yom Shishi, the average Yom Shishi is, is Chol, is an ordinary day. And the Torah says, what? That day has to prepare for the Shabbos. So what prepares for the Shabbos? Chol prepares for Shabbos, and Yom, Shabbos or Yom Tov cannot prepare for Shabbos. Rabbi Latame, Rabbi is consistent with his position, this is by the Mon. It will be on the sixth day. They will prepare what they bring. So, what day is the day of preparation? Yom Hashishi. Yom Hashishi is what is Chol. It's an ordinary day. And that's the day of Achonah. Chol mechem l'Shabbos. So, the, posse, the, the inference of the Posseg is Chol prepares for Shabbos. Chol mechem l'Yom Tif. Chol prepares for Yom Tif. However, but if either day is preceded by a day similar to itself, that day cannot prepare for itself. Because the preparation, the, although it's Bnei Shemayim, it's happening naturally by itself. Nobody's doing actually physical pre preparation. We'll see, we'll see. There's ptosis. You can. You can't, you could. We have an Erev Tavshilin. Erev Tavshilin is only a rabbinical mechanism, and we, that's Tosa's question. According to Rabbo, how are you permitted to prepare from, from Yom Tov to Shabbos? Right? Omale Abaye, so Rabbi yes, is Revi Rabbo. According to you, that the reason why you're not permitted to eat the egg when it's laid in Yom Tov, is because the Yom Tov is preceded by a Shabbos. 
Yom Tov Ba'alma Tishri. So let's see, you have a Yom Tov, which is preceded by a wheat egg. Right? And the egg is laid on the first day of Yom Tov. You should be able to permit it to eat it. And Basil does differentiate. Mm-hmm. Whether it's an ordinary Yom Tov, independent of anything else or not, you're not permitted. On that he answered, Gzeru Mishum Yom Tov HaShabbos. Because if it would per- be, permit you to eat the egg on an ordinary Yom Tov, which is preceded with an ordinary day, the person will eat it on, on the Yom Tov, which was preceded by a Shabbos, which is Nisad Oraiso. And that's what? That's Xero. Mm-hmm. You make, they create an established offense that you shouldn't be in violation of a Torah law. Right? If you have a Yom Tov preceded by a Shabbos, that egg on Yom Tov, on a Torah level, you're not permitted to eat it. Because that egg was not prepared on a weekday. It's laid on a regular Yom Tov, which is preceded by an ordinary day. You're permitted. But if I allow you to eat that egg that's laid on Yom Tov, well, which is preceded by an ordinary day, you may end up eating the egg mm-hmm. on a day of Yom Tov, which is preceded by a Shabbos, which is Nisad or Iso. So, we, so Chazal, they legislate fences, right? That this confusion should not come about. Shabbos, Shabbos Let's say you have an ordinary Shabbos. If the egg is laid, you should be permitted. So why are you not permitted? What would be if you have a Shabbos following Yom Tif? So when did, the, when, when did it evolve into being an egg? On, the, on Yom Tif? Okay? Therefore, that's the Gzeiro. So if the day was preceded by a Shabbos and Yom Tif, then it's this Doraisa. If it's an independent Shabbos, independent Yom Tif, which was preceded by, the, by a weekday, the egg that's laid on that day is only Osman Jabon. Rabbinically, it's not permitted. Okay? So the Mishnah that says, Peshnol the Yom Tif is Osur, it depends. If it was preceded by a Shabbos, Osur is what? Isidor Isa. If it's independent of anything else, then it's Isidor Abonim. Rabbinically, you're not permitted to eat the egg. So what is Bishamayilti? He rejects the whole concept of Achon the Rabbah. He rejects it. So Mariah has a question. Abai asks, Omega Azrinon, do Chazal make this Gzeira that, that if you have an ordinary Shabbos, ordinary Yom Tov, you're not permitted to eat the egg? Or Tanya, we learned in the Braiso. Ashochis Atarnagolis. A person slaughters a chicken on Yom Tov. And he found eggs that were fully formed within the chicken. Mutoris lochlem biyomtif. You permitted to eat it on yomtif. So the question is, how are you permitted if we're saying that even an ordinary yomtif that's preceded by, by a weekday, you're not permitted because it's zero of a yomtif that's preceded by a Shabbos. Let's say this would happen. This was yomtif following a Shabbos. So the egg that I find inside the chicken, when was that egg developed? On Shabbos. And yet it says in the Mishnah, in the Brisa, yeah. that when you slaughter it and you find com- eggs that are fully formed, Sorry. you're permitted to eat them on Yom Tif. The Misa, if you, we, you're of the opinion that we, because of the confusion, they legislated offense. It should be a See, again, the Mars not asking it should be a of Shabbos and Yom Tif. It should be a of the egg that's laid. So the question is the chicken and the egg. The no, the question is, when you find the eggs inside the chicken, so you shouldn't be permitted to eat that egg because that egg will be confused with the egg that's laid on Yom Tif. Right. That's right. laid on Yom Tif. Okay? Oma lei, beim, the gemuras imon, finding completed eggs in their, in the womb of the, of the chicken, mislo shchicho. It's something which is remote, which is uncommon. O mislo shchicho do goes rabbonon. And for something which is uncommon, they don't legislate offense. Okay? So we're not concerned with the confusion of what? The egg that's found in the chicken with the egg that's laid on Yom Tif. I mean, Rashi speaks, even though this is Xero and Xero. Chazal, whenever they legislate any offense, it's offense to pretend, protect the Torah law. Here, it's offense to protect the rabbinic law. Because the Gemara is asking the question, how are you permitted to eat the egg on the Yom Tif? When you find the eggs inside the chicken... We should make a zero because of the egg that's laid. Right. Which egg that's laid? Even ordinary egg that's right. laid. But that's drabon on. Uh-huh. So it, wait, it's a zero to zero. Right. We, don't, we don't make fence to protect rabbinic laws. Right. The answer is because that case is di- directly linked to the egg that's preceded by Shabbos. It's it, it's in. No, here's the oh, oh. Okay, plug it in and we'll take a minute. Tell him to take it off. No, it's not like Patish. The Xerasa course of it's called Tachon of the Rabbah, based on this, this, uh, this, this post. 
anything that you have on Shabbos Yom has to be prepared during a weekday. And Matosa is going to ask a question over here. It says the reason why you're permitted to eat the eggs found in the chicken because it's muslo shkicha, something which is uncommon. But factually, this egg one did it develop in the chicken. The, 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 so if that's, it should be in this dough raisa, right? Well, with, factually, with the friendship between the egg that's laid and the egg that's not laid, or well, even the egg that's not laid, anything, if you tell me anything that you have on Shabbos Yom that has to be prepared from the from ordinary day, factually, it wasn't. It seems to me if you uh, slaughter this chicken and it would be Yom Tif proceeded with a Shabbos, you'd pr be permitted to eat the eggs in the, in the chicken that are found in the chicken. Why? These eggs were, were evolved and were prepared on the Shabbos that preceded the Yom Tif. That's, to, that's Tosa's question. No, 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 no. It's, it's a 24-hour process. From the, tay, what, from the time it evolved, yeah, he finds an egg that's complete. So when did this egg develop? The previous day. So the previous day was Shabbos. On a Torah level, you should not be permitted the egg. Okay, let's get. Let's just take a look at Tosis here. The more asked the question, we should make xero with the eggs that are found in the chicken. You shouldn't be permitted to eat. We should make xero. Nigzum yishum haratam yishaldum yomayan. We should make xero. Next list, Tosis on the page. We should make xero. Legislative fence versus the egg that's laid on the day itself. Vein zek zero lek zero. This is not called a fence to protect the fence. The muta lochlem biyom tif mashma, because the connotation, you're permitted to eat on yom tif, I feel biyom tchacha shabbos. When it says, when you slaughter the chicken, you find the eggs inside the chicken, muta lochlem. It should say mutter. What is muta lochlem? That even in the more extreme case, we have the yom tif following the shabbos, even that case is. So the says, yes, evidently from there you see what? That it's not in the store ISO. Milslo Shikho is more answers mil summers of Koshe. Dilma Lo Shokto Hoiso no let us ayom. You came as from Gomorlo, the tears of Luxero, is so fake. So it's a phenomenal question. It says when you slaughter the ch the chicken and you find the egg inside the chicken, you're permitted to eat it. Right? So he says, What happens if let's say he slaughtered at nine o'clock in the morning, yom of morning? The egg wasn't laid yet. Let's say he wouldn't have slaughtered. Maybe this egg would have been laid at 12 o'clock. If the egg's laid at 12, that means what? That means it, was it, w it evolved to be a completed egg from the day before. So how do we allow you to slaughter the chicken and eat the egg in the morning? Maybe this egg was prepared yesterday, fully prepared yesterday. That's his question. It should be a subject of rice l'chumrah. Whenever you're in doubt regarding a Torah law, you always take the more stringent side. Right? Kosher dilma im l'shoch to isin no ledes hayom. If he wouldn't have slaughtered the chicken on Yom Tif, maybe the egg would have been late today. Vim K, Mias Mogom Rolos, if that's the case, it was completed from the previous day. Vitiosib Lok Zero be Sofik, it should be forbidden on a, without a, a Zero. It's a Sofik the Raiso. The Ishloma de Machad Lo Noda, you they cach. Previous day was Shabbos. Previous day was Shabbos. The Ishloma de Miachad Lo Noda, Al you they cach. He says, since fact it wasn't late. The you they cach, Lo Choshiv Gemar, Gusham Tolagoy. I mean, like this. The only, uh, something that's completed, that was evolved to be something, and completed the previous day, you're not permitted to eat it today. Okay? What's the indication it was completed? It was laid. If you find it inside the chicken, although part of the involvement was the previous day, but since it's not called completed, you're permitted to eat it on the next day. So when you slaughter the chicken, it, was, it wasn't late, even if it was meant to be late. Since factually it wasn't late, it's not a problem. Okay? Spoke to him. <coughs> so Tosis asked the question, which is very important. He asked the question which we discussed. We have an Erev Tavshilin. If Friday is Yom Tev, Shabbos is Shabbos, you permitted to cook from Friday to Shabbos based on this rabbinic mechanism, right? You take a baked product, a cooked product, that's the Eftar Shilin. It's Tosa says, according to Rabbo, that it's Nitzitoraiso, that the only day that, you permit, that prepares for Shabbos has to be an ordinary day. It's how you permit it to cook from Friday to Shabbos, even with an Eftar Shilin. How does a rabbinic mechanism permit you to do something which, seem, which should be an Nitzitoraiso? That's Tosa's question. 
You have it. Okay. So Tosis answers, when we speak of Hachonot Rabba, we're speaking of something that didn't exist. An egg coming to being. Similar to Tosis Kosovo and Ervin, when you have rain and clouds, the rain, till it rains, it's like the rain never existed. Never existed. But if you have, let's say, flour, or you have a piece of meat which is not edible, and you cook it on Shabbos, the, e- the entity exists. There you're just perfecting it. Achona means the, its being came into being on, on, on the previous day, and that's why you have it today. That's, that's the mon. Vechinu she Is it preparing it on the Yadim? Yeah. No, 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 no. That, that's, that's one to see. Again, Rabbi himself says it's called, it's called Holy Mitlo Yorchim. The Nishabur discusses when you make the Erev Tafshil and you cook Friday, how much before Shabbos are you cooking? Are you cooking early enough that if guests would come, it's edible at a minimal level? Or no? You could even start cooking right before Shabbos, where even if guests will come, it's not going to be edible. Right? That's his, so one answer he says you have to cook earlier because that since theoretically if Gus would come they would have what to eat so you're not in violation of a doraisa of cooking or doing lofa. Right? That, that's, but he says what about not like Rabbo that we allow you to cook straight up till, uh, till, till Shabbos. So comes up when Shabbos comes it's not edible. So it's not edible we have Yom Tov preparing for Shabbos and according to Rabbo it's this doraisa. So that Tosa says no. Hachonah the Rabbi is speaking where it's a, it's a new development. It developed into something which didn't exist before. Flour, making it edible, baking it to bread or meat, make causing the edible through cooking. It's not a problem because the meat and the flour existed. Okay. <coughs> the egg, the egg and any other food product. Okay. Further. We have four, four interpretations of the Mishra. Rav Yosef Oma, Gzerim, Shemperis, Hanoshin. Now, what's the aloha? You have an apple tree or any fruit tree. And the fr- apple or the fruit was attached to the tree before Shabbos. You come Shabbos morning, the fruit's lying on the ground. Are you permitted to eat that fruit? You're not permitted to eat the fruit. Why? Because there's a Gzerim, we, we have a fence that if you eat the fruit, you may pick another fruit. Right? That, that's the Gzerim. That a person in his, in, in his desire for what, what he just had, he may pick another fruit. So therefore, the fruit, although it's, it's already been detached from the tree, it doesn't make it. But since when this fruit, when Shabbos began, the Yom began, the fruit was attached, we don't want you to benefit from the fruit because there's gzera, you may actually go pick the fruit yourself, another fruit. Okay? So he says the egg is similar to the fruit. Just as the fruit falls, is detached from its source, the egg... When the chicken lays it, it's also being attached from, from its source. So just that we don't allow you to eat the apple or any fruit that was attached to the tree. It doesn't make it, but it's an, enough of, 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 you know, people make foolish comparisons. People say, well, if I'm permitted that, I'll permit this. No, but if a person visually could see the egg is no different than the apple, he's not going to eat the apple. He's not going to eat the egg. Because just as he knows the apple... Just as he knows the apples off limits to him, this is also off limits to him. So, Rav Yosem, Gzerim, Mishim, Peres, Hanoshim. Fruits that fell. Let's see, Rashi. Rav Yosef, Omar. Time it a bed, the Taragola, Medes, Lachila. Even if the, the chicken was designated for eating, why are you not permitted to eat the egg? Kudu Kimno, Ube Silel, Damri, Mishim, Peres, Hanoshim. Mini Ilam, Bishabis. It's no different than fruits falling from the tree on Shabbos. The reason why I don't want you to eat the egg is because we're concerned you may eat the fruit that falls from the tree. And the right, food, food, food from me falls on the tree. That's exeri. You may pick fruit. So the egg coming out of the chicken is similar it's the fruit of the chicken falling from detaching itself from its source. Okay? Amalei Abaye, who was also a student of Rav Yosef and Rabbo, Abaye says to, to Rav Yosef, Peres HaNoshim time am I? What's the reason of Peres HaNoshim? When fruits fall from a tree, why don't we allow you to eat the fruit or even to touch the fruit? Time am I? 
Fruit falls from the tree where it was attached when Shabbos began. There's a gzera that you may actually go and pick the fruit. Right, we have a principle. Rashi says this. It says in the Torah, Shmarta mis mishmarti. You should watch over my dictate, my mishmeris. So what's the inference? You should watch over my, my dictate, but not the dictate of my dictate. Right? Shmarta mis mishmarti. You should be supervised my mishmeris. Mishmeris means that's the entity that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But what about if it's a mishmeris, another fence to protect that? Right? There's no basis for that. So we're asking a question. What's the reason why I don't allow you to eat the egg? Because it's similar to the fruit that fell off the tree. And why aren't you permitting the egg to fall off the tree? Again, you may pick the fruit, which, which is what? Which is the egg. So it's like zero, like zero. You're creating one fence to protect another fence. We don't do such things. The gufa. Zero, shemi al vietlo, she gufa, zero. So more ants. But that itself is like zero. Bananakum, vinigzer, zero, like zero. We should go and literally means I'm not naked. We should stand up and legislate a fence against the fence. And that's why it's cool. It's one gzera. That's you don't look at it as compartmentalized, compartmental, but rather it's one. So Tosis explains in Shabbos that sometimes a fence to protect a fence. If you have two fences which are independent of the other, we don't make a fence to protect the fence. What about if you don't protect this fence? Everything is going to collapse. The whole system is going to collapse. That's not called the zero the zero. Zero the zero means I'm legislating this to protect step nine, nine eight. That's offense to offense. Here I have to protect step six of the steps because otherwise the wall collapses. That that's called one zero. Okay. So Mar says he goof exera. It itself is exera. How come they come nigs exera exera? Mar says chulak out exera. Meaning the egg come in the, in, the, in the chicken is the equivalent of the fruit and the tree. It's like one the same case. People will not differentiate between the two. Once people don't differentiate, then it's not called exera exera. You following? They see it as the same case. The f egg sticking out of the chicken, and and the fruit. Well, about the fall of the tree, it's the exact same case. Omar of Yitzchok, excuse me, of Yitzchok, Omar of Zerim Shemashkin Shezobu, new concept. What happens if you have a pile of grapes and the weight of the grapes causes fluid to ooze out of the, out of the grapes? Are you permitted to drink that liquid? Right? A person would squeeze a grape on Shabbos. You're not permitted to eat liquid. That's simple because that's that's mefarik. You're not permitted to benefit from an isidor raisa. So the first one squeeze grapes on Shabbos, even though there's no the, the grape itself, the product is a perfect product. You're not allowed to eat it because what we're concerned that actually if we allow you to eat the egg, just that the egg is oozes out of the chicken, the fruit ooze, the water, the liquid fruit oozes out of the fruit. That's 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 the analogy. That's the reason why, according to Basilel, you're not permitted to eat the chicken. Why, when you have liquid oozing out of fruits, why aren't you permitted to drink it? Drink the fruits, the juice. Because you may, you have, you may squeeze the grape, which is this the rice that's mefarik. What, what's Mufari coward? And to come to, you, so you, you're afraid that you would do it again, like no, but, but what is no? What, what's Mufari? Mufari is something else. It's it's that's it's taking one entity out of another, another entity. That's a squeezing. So, because it's a, it's a food item, and by squeezing it, you take liquid out of a solid. So that's right. That's Mufari. Yeah. So the egg coming out of the chicken is that's similar to the juice coming out of the fruit. Good. Yeah, the reason. Zerushim mashkish is over. Amalei abayi mashkish is over. Time in my zerushim yischot. Hey, right. That the reason why you're not permitted to drink the fruit juice is because there's a concern you may squeeze the fruit. He goofed zero, but a nake of nikum zero zero. It it itself is zero. How do I make a zero to protect zero? And that's why it's called cool zero. It's one one fence. Stop. What does it mean? It's a one zero, which means 
If you don't observe the first part of it, <coughs> everything collapses. Nothing's going to hold up. Mm. Why not? I gave you a case. You put pile up 10 pounds of grapes in the plate. The weight of the grapes causes... So, so nobody squeezed it. Just the weight, the nature of, of what, the, what the grapes are caused the juice to be extracted. So can you drink the juice? Because you may squeeze the fruits. No, because you end up squeezing. You may squeeze the fruit. squeeze on their own, you can't take advantage of them. What? Yeah. If they squeeze on their own because of the weight, you can't take advantage of that work. They don't want you to take advantage of that. No, but again, why are you not permitted to drink the, the liquid that came out naturally? That's, that's a drop on it. It's xero. Okay, now, we say the chicken, the egg come out of the chicken, similar to that, that fruit juice. So that I don't want you to, to, to eat the egg because you may drink the juice. And if I drink the juice, it's only drop on it. I only violate a rabbinical. It's not a doraiso. It's not a xero because you may squeeze. That's the background why I don't let you drink the juice. Okay? So the, why don't you permit to drink the juice? That's xero. And why are we comparing the egg and the chicken to the juice coming out of the fruit? That's xero. So because people, they'll confuse the two. And if they confuse the two? Uh, no, it's not a problem. They confuse the two. They'll confuse the two. Because factually, if the, the grapes initially were not designated for eating, you're permitted to squeeze it. You're permitted to squeeze it. Then you're not. Because they're... they're right. Well, let's say it's a grape which has a, a, a dual uh, function. Wine and eating. So it says, you know, you're not permitted. So more but it's like zero, like zero. Right? <coughs> okay. Mask, so how many, how many pins do we have? The first opinion is Rab Nachman. Why the egg are you not permitted to eat? Because the egg, the mother was a hen laying, egg, it was an egg machine. So the, 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 the classification of the mother is not food. So the egg that's laid did not have preparations. It's mukta. That's the first. Second was Rabo, Hachonu the Rabo, Isidor Raisa. That it starts with you have a Shabbos preceding the Yomtif, and the egg is laid on Yomtif. When did it evolve? It evolved on, Yom, on Shabbos. Third reason is it's similar to the fruit falling off the tree, right? That's Peres no shlim. So just as the fruit falls from the tree, it's mukta. The egg coming out of the chicken, it's, it's, it's being separated from its source of growth. The third reason is it's similar to the, the juice being extracted from a grape. Okay? Just as the, even though you didn't extract it, it happened by itself. Yet the halachas, you're not permitted to eat the juice. The egg, similarly here, you're not permitted to benefit from the juice. So now we have to say, why does each one reject the other one? That's what the Mars go through. Why does Rab ex- reject Rab Nachman? Why does Rab Nachman reject Rabba? There you go. The Samaritan said, Kula Chadik Zeri, Kuluk, no, Kuluk Rab Nachman, Why don't they all agree with Rab Nachman? Rab Nachman says simply, What's the machlois b'sham b'silo? Do you hold a muktzah? Don't you hold a muktzah? Kulo kveish karanach lo amri kikushin kikushon. One second. Kulo karav because we asked the question. What, what question did we ask? We asked according to Rabba, according to Rav Nachman, what should the Gemara said? Tanagolas u beitzosa. What are they arguing? Only the egg. They should even argue the chicken, right? right? So they couldn't answer that. No, because the fact that the Mishnah only says the egg. Right. So therefore we had to go to Rabbo. Hachon the Rabbo. Because Shabbos is preparing for Yom Tif. So he says, Kulukarab Nachlo Amoron Lo Amri Ki As As we asked the question on Rabbo, which Rabbo did not respond. Right? Kirabba Nami Lo Amri. And learn like Rabbo. That's because Hachon. Right? The Mar says, "Less leu, because lo amri hachonah less. They don't hold the, the drasha. They don't hold the, such, such a thing as hachonah doraisa. That's why they reject it." Ella Rav Yosef, my time, Lomak Rav Yitzchok. 
What does Rav Yosef say? Rav Yitzhak says it's mashkin shazofu. It's like extracting liquid from, from a fruit. What is he coming up? Uh, what does he say? He says, Pesha no shlim. Why does he compare it more to fruits falling out of the tree than the juice being extracted from the grape? That's his question. Elamai Taimo, Lomak Rav Yitzchok. Okay. Oma Loch. Beo Uperis Uchlo. The fruit and the fru- the the food, and what and the pears are both food. La fuge mashkin the lav uchlin inu. They're not fruit, right? It's not food. It's it's liquid. One second. How would you want a cup of coffee? Yes. Over there. Instant is good. Let's take a look at Rashi. Yeah, okay. Amar beya uchlo. He says beya uchlo peris uchlo. The fugi mashkin the lav uchlo. Right? Say phenomenal. Rav Yitzchok says the fruit that falls off the true tree. How do you classify that? An apple. It's a fruit food item. The egg that comes out of the chicken is is a food item. It's not a liquid. So therefore, he says to compare it to liquid being ex- oozed out of fruit. That's not a comparison. If you could compare the egg to the fruit falling off the tree, it's a better comparison than the right than, than the, the liquid oozing out of the, out of the grapes. That's what he's saying. The egg is a food item. Paris uchlo and fruits is a food item. to exclude liquids, which is not classified as an ochel. Rav Yitzchuk, my time, or lo Oma Rav Yosef. Rav Yitzchuk is the one who says, Mashkin Shizavu, Oma Lo Beya Blue, Mashkin Blue. Hear this? The egg is concealed. Right when you have a fruit growing on the tree, it's not concealed. So the egg is concealed. The fruit, the fruit juice is concealed, and the egg is concealed. La Fuki Peros to exclude fruits. The Miglo Vakaimu, they're exposed and they exist. As a result of that. Rav Yosef compares it to the fruit formula of the tree. Okay. Very good. Okay, let's see Rashi. We have Rashi over here. Amid um, um, base. Rashi, Rav Yosef, um, at time of the Bay of Tanagol, we told about the, the chicken was designated for eating. Ukadukimno as we Ubesilel the Asri, so what is Basil saying not permitted to eat the fruit? We should pairs on no shim in Elon fruits that fall from the tree. Vishab is also good daitoch. Hashik Zeri. So right now the Gemara understands why aren't you permitted to eat the egg? It's a Xero for the the equivalent of fruit falling off the tree. We should pairs and notion the low nichlinu, the nami pairs notion, mean Elon Damio. Shab Zupri had no share. The fruit, the fruit falls from the tree, and the egg comes out of the chicken. That's how. That's the analogy between the two of them. And why aren't you permitted to eat the fruit that falls out of the tree? Because you may go and send the tree and pick another fruit. Do we see the raiso, dinu kotzer? That's reaping. To Why aren't you permitted to pick fruits on Shabbos? <coughs> it's, it's the malach of reaping. So more yes, but it's a gzeir and gzeiro, right? It's a fence for a fence. That verse is chadik zeri. Lo shtei zug zero. The nicely Paris hanoshin elok shenim lo gomer ala Paris hanoshin av beya hoiso b'mashma. Now, just let me explain to you. The question is, what's zero lo zero? If they originally issued a fence, and the fence was all encompassing, right? And w- this is only an interpretation of the original fence. That's not zero lo zero. Right? That, it, they said, you're not permitted to eat a fruit that falls from the tree because you may pick another fruit. Now, what's, when they said fruit falling from a tree, they included the egg coming out of the chicken. When they originally said. Why? Because, they, because if you do one, you, it's inevitable you do the other one. Okay? That's what he's explaining. The lo lacy lady pairs in Oshlin. El Shinimnu Vigozwa Paris had notion when they originally had a consensus 
and they legislated the law of Peres HaNoshin, Avdeh was included in that legislation. Avogavit Lesbo Bishop Talisha, although egg you don't pick, that comes out naturally. Mi Bechal Gzero, Gzeres Chachom Hoysa, but it's included within the Gzero of the Chachomim. Shafu Pri Noisha, because it's also fruit that falls out of the what? Out of the mother hen. Okay. No, no. Trabonim. Gzero Shemi Yalavit Losh. See, the difficulty is. What do we need exer shemay yitlosh? I told Rashi to speaks about it. It's book books of Machbasis. If you want to take, if you want to have a, an apple on Shabbos and all the apples will grow, what do you have to violate? Reaping. It happens. The wind detached it. When Shabbos began, this uh, apple it was off limits. So that's called books of Machbasis. I was denied initially to it because I'd have to violate something to have it. So if that's the case, what do we need, Xero? You may bend down and pick another fruit. The reason why you're not permitted, it's regular mukta. Because when Shabbos began, it was what? It was attached. No, chicken. You're permitted to slaughter on yomta. Yeah, if you compare the egg to that. Yeah, but what do we have to come on? Because you may, you may actually pick the apple. But they said for the apple. The reason why if an apple falls off a tree on Shabbos or Yom Tif, you're not permitted because you may come pick the fruit. Okay. Why is it also? No. No, it's also because you may pick it. You may pick it. Yeah, I'm talking about the egg. The egg is similar to the fruit falling off the tree. Just as the fruit of the tree is the fruit of the tree, the egg is the fruit of the, of the hen. And just as it falls out, it comes out, that's similar to the tree coming off its tree. And just by, by the tree, there's a gzera of, of, goes, of goats there. This is included in that because they said anything which resembles the tree, fruit falling of the tree, is the equivalent of goats there. That's what we're asking. That, that's the question. What do we need? Right, right. Okay. Yeah, but that's the same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's get back to Rashi. Misha Mashkin. Rav Yosef says it's Mashkin Shizovu. It's similar to juices oozing out of a fruit. The kaimul asurim bo biyom. Halach is you're not permitted to drink the fruit on that day. Kidnan v'miyotzav miyatzma asurin. Even though the the juices oozed out by themselves as a result of the weight of the fruits, you're not permitted. Obeim nami dam yoldahu. The egg is analogous to that. Why? Shazova v'yotzeis mimokom mimokom shoyse blua. It's oozing out from the location that initially was absorbed in, right? Until the egg, the hen gives, lays the egg, you don't know it's within its, its system. Shemi Yishot, Schidos Peris told the Doshi, squeezing fruits is what is it told of Dosh. Yeah. Shemifarkin mitoch, mitoch zag shelen, kimifareg tfu mikashelo. It's like extracting the 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 seed that has the juice from the from the grape, leaving it hollow. Here, dami. Okay, charek zero kafrishis. She goes well. A mashkin. She zovu abe and ami hoisu be mashma. They originally had that in mind. Okay. For Rav Yitzchak, my Talmud Omer, for Rav Yosef, look, be a blue. Bayo is absorbed and mashkin bluing. La fuki peris the miglu v'kaimu. But but the case of the what, of fruits, it's it's obvious. It's exposed. It's revealed. No, that's the reason why juice is more yeah. comparable to the egg. But the fruit falling off the tree with it, the fruit is obvious. Not. Mm-hmm. 
Vavre Yochanan Sova Gzer Mishmashkin Sovu. This is interesting. We're able to deduce from Rabbi Yochanan that the reason why you're not permitted to eat the egg it's also because it, it's, compar- it's analogous to juices that ooze from the chicken, from the grapes. What's the story? The Rabbi Yochanan Rami. Rabbi Yochanan is a theory, it's a contradiction in Rabbi Yudha. Rami, the Rabbi Yudha is Rabbi Yudha. Umishani, he answers a contradiction in Rabbi Yudha, and he answers, and the way he answers, it's clear that his understanding of Beishnol to be umptif is because it's comparable to the fruit falling off the tree. Okay. The Rabbi Yochan Rami, the Rabbi Yudha, the Rabbi Yudha. Mushani, Tnan, Ein Sochnes, Aperis, Lotzi, Mehen, Mashkin. You're not permitted to squeeze fruits on Yom Tif to extract the juice from the fruit. Vim Yotzim, Atzan, Asurin. What about if it what? Just from the weight of the fruits, the juice oozes out also. You're not permitted. Why aren't you permitted? Because there's a Xero to squeeze it directly. That's an Isidor Isa. What about if they're, they're, they, they ooze out by themselves? It's awesome, Jarbona, because there's a Xero, you may squeeze the fruits. Rabbi Yudo, man, no. What about if they were purchased initially for eating? Hayotzim and Mutter. Yeah? You have table grapes. And now the juices ooze out. You're permitted to, to, you're permitted to drink the juice. Why? What, why, no, what, why normally won't you? Because the Xeri may squeeze it, but if you squeeze the fruits, you're not going to have fruit to eat. If you purchase grapes for squeezing, they ooze out by themselves, since ultimately that is the value of the grape. So the Xeri may squeeze it. But if I bought fruit to be table fruit, not there, not there, not because there are chachila. No, no, there's no gzera. There's no basis. There's not even the concern. He may squeeze it. The man has guests coming. They can serve fruit at the table. Right. So is he going to squeeze the grapes? He needs the fruit for the people to eat the fruit. That's what he says. If it was pur- purchased for eating, then the juice that oozes out is permitted because there's no basis for gzera. Vim lemashkin. But if he purchased the grape initially for squeezing for the juice. Hayotzman also. The juice that oozes from me, you're not permitted to drink. Why? Because there's a gzero, you may actually extract the juice. So what do we see? Alma called now, but the question is this is the question. When it's purchased for eating, you're permitted to eat to, eat to, to drink the juice, because you're not going to squeeze. But what about mukta? It's mukta. The, the juice. The juice did not did not exist prior to this. It's a new entity unless he holds that the juice is, is part of the grape. That's called Uchre Efres. No, 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 The brach will be shako. It's not only grapes, whatever the fruit is, apples. Before it's brought, creates now it's shako. It has nothing to do with brachos. Over here the reason is because we see the juice as part of the fruit. Right? I'll give you an example. If you have um, meat and you have the fat oozing out of when it's heated, the fat oozes out of the chicken, out of the meat, right? And then the meat, then that fat solidifies. It congeals. That congealed fat, what is, what is, how is it classified? As meat, not as liquid. <coughs> Shabbos, you're not permitted to reheat some liquid that's, that w- that's cold, rabbinically. Liquid that was cooked, if it cools down, you're not permitted to reheat it. You have, you have meat in, in gravy. The gravy itself now has solidified. You want to put it in a location, it's going to be hot enough that you're going to reheat the, the meat which you permitted. But simultaneously, you're going to cause the fat to want to liquefy. Are you permitted? Are you permitted? Is that co- co- called cooking, taking cold liquid and heating it? So the since the fat is, is classified as meat, not as liquid, so even though it's going to be liquefied and it's going to p- appear to be liquid, but since it will solidify when it's n- not heated, that d- tells you its classification is meat, not liquid. Okay? So therefore, the fat that comes out of the, chi- out, out of the meat is not called no light either. That is part of the meat itself. If you have meat, let's say cooking water, and then water ex- is extracted from the meat, right? well, let's say natural juices come from the meat, the juices themselves is classified as liquid. Egg is not chicken. Egg is not chicken. No, no, no. So we, no, we're talking about the juice. No. The, ju- the juice that comes out of the, out of the grape, do we see that as part of the grape? Or do we say since it's a liquid, we don't see it as part of the grape? Regarding the laws of mukta. 
Because even though we're not concerned, he may actually squeeze the fruit because it was purchased for eating. But factually, the liquid before it was fruit, now it's liquid. It's a different entity. But if you see the fruit is, is a composition of, 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 of flesh of the fruit and liquid, that's the fruit. So it's just the liquid just came out of the fruit, but it was there. You don't see it as a new entity. This is what Rabbi Yochan deduces. As long as it's classified as fruit, where it's purchased fruit, anything that comes from that fruit is, is, is conceived as part of the fruit. Ifrus means fruit being detached from the fruit itself. Buying for season, it's a, it's a pr- different problem. It's a much more serious problem. It's not a moksa, you may actually squeeze it. Here we're saying even if it's purchased for, for eating, it should still not be permitted because it's moksa. Because before it was a solid, now you have a liquid. The answer is no, the liquid is part of the solid. That pre-existed before it came out of the grape. So you don't see it as a new entity. But if, let's say, it was purchased for eating, for, for squeezing, why don't you permit that? That's it's much more serious. Because then you actually, since its purpose was squeezing, you may like what it tastes like, the liquid, and you may squeeze it. Squeezing is in this no riso. Okay? That's the first, first thing Rabbi Udad said. So Rabbi Udad differentiated whether the fruit's being purchased for eating or the fruit is being purchased for squeezing. Okay? It's a chicken machine? Let me ask a question. Did he have, did he, was the recorder long enough for Lee? Yeah. Okay. Well, well, we're not even talking about the chicken. Not to f- we're free chicken here. Uraminu. The old Am Rebu, the Rebu says another halacha. Now, the halacha is you're not permitted to tithe fruits or grain on Shabbos or Yom Tif. You're not permitted. Why? Tithe, tithing. Why? Now, makad the patish, bringing something to a level of perfection in the physical sense, you're not permitted. Let's say you have a, a nail and it, you want to just give it its last blow to make it flush with wherever it's, 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 it's embedded, not permitted. That's called macro. You're putting the final touches. You build a wall, and you take the, 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 the tool, and you, the handle, and you tap it into place. That's macro the patish. Right? That's the final touches to make it to perfect. That's called perfection. Now, tithe, untithe grain or fruit you're not permitted to eat produce. Rabbinically, now if you tied it, so before how luckily you weren't permitted to eat it, after you tied it, you're permitted to eat it. So it has a semblance of bringing some to a level of perfection. Even though maktash on the Torah level is only in the physical sense, not in the halachic sense. Halachically, it wasn't permitted, now it's permitted. But people, they confuse the two. Just as before, it wasn't edible, even though edibility here doesn't mean physical edibility. We're talking about halachically, for halachic reasons. And when you tied it, you made it now halachically available so if, you, if I would permit that people would permit even makabipatish if rabbinically you're not permitted to tithe on Shabbos and Yom for that reason okay it's a rabbinic fence because people confuse the two now what happens if you have a two day Yom Tif? two day Yom Tif. And, you, and you forgot to tithe it before Yom Tif. so there's no such thing on the Torah level there's only one day Yom Tif, right there's no such thing as two days Yom Tif. The reason why we keep two days is it's called the Sveik of the Yoma. Right? Either the first day is the second day is The person has a basket of fruit, he says, like this, the first day. If today is Yom Tif, then all the fruit is what? My act of tithing has no value. But if it's not Yom Tif, then my act of tithing has value. Now the second day, now the second day Yom Tif comes, he says, if yesterday was Yom Tif, then my act of tithing that I'm doing today is, is, is an act of tithing. Ties it again. And if in fact, today is Yom Tif, what I did yesterday, that should be the tithing. Because there's only one day Yom Tif. Right? Th- that's what he does. He ties it conditionally. Master Odom al Kalkola Shoperes Yom Tif Rishon V'ochle B'Shemi He says, he's, he, he, really he doesn't need we'll, we'll see Rashi. And he's permitted to eat the fruit on the second day Yom Tif. Why? Because when he did the act of tithing, first it was he didn't do it on Yom Tif. He says, if today is Yom Tif, let it not be. And if it is, let it be. V'chein be'esh in Odo B'Yom Tif, in Odo B'Rishon, Tochal B'Sheni, we'll continue this. Of course, I'm going to do Rashi.